so we can't make it. Right, good morning, everybody. It's uh, great to see you at uh, the July Book Club. It's, uh, it's uh, gone quite quickly, this one. I don't know about you, but uh, um, I uh, just about finished the book, uh, I think about Monday, Tuesday. So, uh, um, and uh, it, was, uh, it, was, yeah, it was, I thought it was quite an easy read. Um, wasn't wasn't too taxing, sort of, you know, it's reasonably sort of, you know, long in pages, but short in chapters which I quite like you feel like you've you're making progress when it's like that uh, I've got I've got something a little bit bit meatier for you for next month so I've got a feeling that might be a two month uh so when I when I saw that it was 25 hours of audio and uh thinking oh, okay that's uh but then there's lots of holidays coming up so you can sit sit back on the beach and read or, or listen to it but uh so, so this month's book is uh, the Fortune Cookie Principle. Uh, obviously, yeah, you guys uh, all know. Uh, yep, you guys all know about uh, the purpose of book club. But if you are watching this on uh, on the recordings, please, you know, do come and join the conversations. It's great to hear what we have to say about it. But we want you guys to to come in and uh, participate as well. So it's always last Friday of the month, uh, eight till nine thirty. So I uh, shouldn't uh, affect your week too much and um you know yeah it's been good to have you know, come come and join us for these so uh, but the book of the month uh, fortune cookie principle uh this one's been sitting on my uh, shelf for, for some time uh it was one that i'd been recommended but never got around to reading so i thought uh, right good, good time to dust it off as i moved my bookcase from the office back to home and um yeah i, I think you know what stood out for me uh, Seth, if Seth got in recommends it then it's probably going to be a good book so uh, uh very much i think in line with the the one that came to mind for me was the um they ask you answer and a few and story brand it was very much in the vein of those books but uh, looking at it from a slightly different perspective so the author is um oh bernadette jiwa uh so uh bernadette uh and you know she's written i think six books uh she's she's written o over the years sort of you know which look quite interesting so you know certainly if you'd like her style to explore some of her other books and you know um she was a, a strange that she was a blogging up to 2020 so i wonder why she stopped blogging so uh because i thought uh uh, that was a, a big thing. Having, having been, I'm on a podcast tour at the moment, so I'm going around uh, the the world. So I was in uh, where was I last yesterday? Um, Colorado, Colorado. I was uh, in uh, doing a, a blog post. I was in Minnesota uh, the other week and um, a Newcastle on Tuesday. So uh, it's amazing where where podcasts take you. Uh, but it's a yeah, it's definitely a big thing. There's you know the full time podcasters now. And uh, they seem to get paid by advertising revenues. So the more people watch their shows, they get the adverts. So uh, yeah, interesting why she stopped that. So good. So the the book is sort of broken down into sort of twenty one chapters, uh, and I thought I can't I can't do twenty one slides. So uh, so I've I've sort of looked at it and thought, well, it it sort of breaks down into into core areas so that so I've, I've sort of put a few chapters together uh which i think is what that chat those few chapters are you know trying to get a excuse me get across to, but the, the intro was really about this uh you know uh building a brand versus sort of selling a store you're selling a commodity you know that uh, this is very much your know, marketing for her is not about you know just sort of selling a product from the advert you know, it's building that relationship with people so that they can, you know, learn more about you and then they come and knock at your door and then they want to buy. So, so Andy, what's what was your sort of takeaways from this sort of first, so I'd say 12, 13 pages then? What's uh, what stood out for you? Um, 
I've made notes on the other bits. I, ah. yeah, I didn't make a note on the introduction. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, it, I think it put me in mind of, you know, you were talking about other books earlier. I, I was kind of thinking of the um, sort of start with why. And, and yeah, you know, um, it's, yeah, I think if you're, you know, as, as you put there, if, if you're selling a, you know, a commodity product, um then you know you can't you know you, you've got to if, if you're just competing on price and features um then it's it's a it's a hard game mm. if you can actually get people to understand your your motivation your mission your you know really kind of buy into your reason for doing it then um, you know that is is going to break you away from the competition yeah. and, um, and and make a huge difference because you know particularly with any kind of online retail, there's just so much choice. Uh, how do you how do you stand out? Yeah, yeah, I think that that's you know um, that's one of the key things that sort of old marketing where people have limited choice you knew where they were now they could be anywhere and they've got as much choice as they want that point of differentiation is so much more important and your story is what differentiates you you know i think i think this was a chapter where she brought in jimmy's iced coffee um Mm -hmm. so um you know so it was that sort of you know story of going round and not being able to get a decent iced coffee anywhere and uh so he sort of you know created it we sell happiness in a carton so, um and you you know you, we are starting to see that more and more now with with brands you know we're, we're getting affinity with those because we we buy the story you know the ben and jerry's ice cream you know innocent smoothies you know uh even the you know the body shop you know so anita roddick's sort of quest you know those were the sort of the forbearers away from the big corporate okay they've become big corporate because the big corporates end up buying them up but hopefully the brand still stands for something going forward so gary anything else that stood out for you from the from those uh that introduction part yeah i think it's very similar like you say it's it's going to be a hard game if if you're if you're just going to sell against price against everybody else sort of thing if you can, you know, find what is the story for your company, um, no matter what size you are, um, and yeah. then try and, you know, put that in your in your marketing, your advertising, and you, you, you know how you sell, then it's you know people can uh, uh, catch on with that. Yeah, like you say, it can, it can differentiate you. So it's um, yeah, tell tell your story as, as as well, sort of thing. It's so it's, it's a nice idea. Yeah. But, uh... So that you know, I think the uh, well, the start he, he sort of, as that little in nineteen ninety seven young CEO was launching a new product. You know, marketing is about values. Our customers want to know what it, what it is we stand for, and what we're about isn't making boxes for people to get their jobs done. Although we do that well, we're about something more than that. We believe that people with passion can change the world for for better. You know, and that was Steve Jobs and Apple. Um, so you know it's, it's it's that belief within your story so, and i think I, i've always i think it is difficult for the small business you know that you know when you start a business you're, you're trying to make a living you know you're trying to you're doing it because you, you've lost your job or you know you, you've got to put food on the table um and therefore you know all you're trying to do is sell boxes you know or do deliver the service and then sort of a bit later on down the line you're then asked to say well what's your why and it's uh i found that you know a little bit difficult with myself you know because i i sort of got into this without i, I did have it but I, it wasn't the reason i got into it if you see what i mean you know i did it because i wanted to do it for me you know because i like doing it and then it's well it's not about me it's about everyone else so, so you sort of almost got to go back and then reinvent it so cool so then we sort of move into the the meat of the book. So you know these twenty one or these twenty um, keys, and then uh, she adds a nice little one at the end. 
Um, so I looked at this and thought, well, if we break this, if we break it down, the first four are really about the why. You know, sort of, you know, what is the, the truth, the purpose, the vision and values? And, and this, you know, the first time I came across this with Jim Collins, Good to Great. I think you know, a few of you have, have read that. So this whole sort of premise that great companies have real clarity around what their purpose is, what their vision for the future is, and and their values. So, so Bruce, what was uh, what were your standout points from the first four chapters here on vision, values, and um, purpose? I think on the the values, um, I sort of resonated with the the bit that was talking about the the hotel and how. Um, you know, the, the values, you know, the, really the staff, um, you know, really understood the, the values and lived by them and mm. they were able to work quite autonomously, uh, in terms of, you know, the, the way, you know, the, the customer service that they, they gave in, you know, many situations was really, yeah exceptional, yeah. but they were empowered to do it, you know, um, um yeah they, they didn't need to ask permission you yeah, know that they knew what the, the values are of the organization and you know they um yeah in certain situations you know provided a service which yeah it was just exceptional and yeah I, I think you know that for me I think that that's just great it's such a great a great business and um yeah it's obviously yeah for that hotel yeah it's yeah it, they'd be scoring very highly for their clientele yeah. um but yeah that, i think out of those three that that was the thing that stood out for me um or the thing i can remember <laughs> um, um but yeah i think that's uh but i sort of also look at it death and you know where we are and i think you know we've worked very hard on values um over the years um but yeah it's it's something that i think you have to keep working at it and you have to um um yeah, the, obviously the team changes you get new starters you yeah. have to keep sending the message yeah. out you have to keep um yeah and i think yeah we're, we're perhaps seeing some examples now where perhaps we're looking at things thinking actually are we living the values there yeah, yeah we're not really doing what we want to be doing and uh yeah and it's a lot of it is management yeah we're not communicating properly or we're not yeah, where where we're not living the values, we need to get on top of it and um, yeah, take the opportunity to um, yeah remind people of what we're all about and how we do things and uh, yeah, with that messaging, um, yeah, uh, hopefully individuals can autonomously be doing this and uh, yeah, you can yeah have a, a great service that sets you apart from yeah your competitors or yeah, yeah similar companies. Um, no, I, I think that's yeah that that is the key to it that yeah once you've set them you you have to keep working at it um you know i've done that a number of times with, with clients and we set the values and we share them and then they sort of get forgotten about and then the, the team start going off piste and it's, it's it's using those values to come back to and say look yeah how was that behavior in line with our values you know, when somebody does something that is good in line with the values, then reward them. You know, say, well done. That's brilliant. That's that's the sort of behavior that I want to see. So you have to work really hard at it. Yeah, you know, I think Brian Tracy's book, Managing by Values, says if you know, all you have to do is manage the values, that the values manage the company. So you just make sure people are aware of them and living them and uh, and then everything moves in that direction. Yeah, they, they, they get it wrong occasionally. But that's when you come in as referee and blow your whistle and you know help the people to see that ah yeah okay yeah if I if I had done that then you know it, there would have been a different outcome. So cool, Andy. Anything else that stood out for you for those uh, four chapters? Um, yeah, I mean, I I thought the the format was was really good. Um, in the sense of kind of introducing the, the topics and talking around them a bit, giving a lot of examples and then some questions. Yeah. So it's, it's very kind of practical. So um, I did try to answer uh, a lot of the questions. Yeah. Um, 
So, you know, we were just talking about sort of the value stuff and Bruce Kick, the example of the, the hotel. And I kind of, I jotted down, oh, you know, maybe we should, um, you know, give teams a, a, a kind of budget for if they spot any little opportunities to, you know, get, go beyond for, for the client. The client mm-hmm. says, oh, you know, I'm, I don't know. Oh, our multimeter's broken. All right, yep. we'll send you a new one. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. It's a bad example. <laughs> yeah. so, you know. Um, uh, what, what else? Um, yeah, the, the kind of the, the what business are you in? Um, that, that was definitely, you know, 100% aligned with the kind of um, start with why. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, we've kind of, we, we did some work on that um, last year and we've kind of captured our, our why and our, our purpose. So, um, kind of had that one covered. Um, yeah, interesting about sort of how, the, it was asked a number of times, so how do you want your customers to feel? Mm. Um, I thought that was, that was an interesting one to, to think about. Um, and I think as we progressed through the book, I sort of wrote some slightly different answers each time, depending on what the, the focus was. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, kind of the, the purpose mm. stuff and the, the um, I, I guess that's, yeah, it, it, again, it, um, it's there's a, a lot of these things are similar but different yeah you find yourself kind of writing the same answers but in a just with a slightly different angle on them uh, which which can be quite insightful um what else do we have um yeah stuff about connecting with customers um and you know i started thinking about well you know, because where we're all working, from, well, not all, but where more people are working from home now, um, and we're doing much more hot desking, then actually, is there an opportunity to say to customers more, well, you know, you're welcome to come and work on one of our hot desks with us um, and <clears throat> get get more of a direct connection yeah. with, with yeah. them. Uh, it's not always appropriate if there's kind of confidential stuff going on yeah. or, or whatever, but um but I, I thought i mean that has happened there have been a couple of occasions where clients have come to work in our office with us um but yeah as we move towards more of a hot desk setup then potentially that could become more common yeah um yeah there was there's a lot of stuff around communications with clients and so i was thinking about well at the moment we do um for active projects, we will send an email out each week that tells customers how their project's progressing and you know um, where, where our time is being spent, which activities we're working on, things like that. Um, so you know, I started thinking about is is there is there more that we could put in those emails that's that's a bit of extra value add, and then actually is there is there then an opportunity to continue sending those emails once the project's finished? Hmm. So, you know, rather than getting this state as getting an email that says this is status of your project, it becomes we well, haven't got any projects running for us at the moment. But you know, here's some interesting blog articles that we've found this week. Um, by the way, have you uh, you know have you heard about this or or whatever it is? Um, uh, just trying to keep the communication going, put a bit of extra value in there. Um, it's quite challenging to do because um, with a breadth of clients, they're all interested mm. in different things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was something else. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, you know, and I'd, I'd say, I'd, you're right, I'd, I like the style of, you know, this is what we're talking about. Here's some examples from companies. And I thought the... Uh, the Lego Group one was really good. Mm. That uh, you know, is it in two thousand? You know, um, sort of Lego lost its way, 
and then uh, Jürgen Vig Knudstrop Storp uh, came in 2005 and you know he, he got back to the purpose of Lego you know mm. the, you know why we're here what we're trying to achieve and uh, you know got that through the through the whole organization and uh, and within a few years you know, turned it to a, an extremely profitable business so you know profits yeah you know, are a result of getting you know that vision values and purpose right mm-hmm. you know they would they will come when you do that and if you're just focused on profits then you lose sight of everything you might gain them short term but long term you, you know you risk losing it so cool gary any any last thoughts on those four chapters before we move on no, oh, no, I think Andy covered it quite well. Okay. Uh, like say, it's it's nice that these companies have values, but it's it's hard work to to, to keep those values in place. Um, when there's four of you, it can be quite easy. Yeah. Uh, when 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 there's five hundred, <laughs> it you, you know it's, it's it's a little bit different sort sort of thing. But um, no, I like I like Andy's thoughts of like I say what he's taken out of it and trying to you know, provide value. You know, not just now while he's working on the projects, but you know while he's working. Yeah. You know, keep in touch with those uh, those guys and hopefully they'll come back because you know you have in the past provide that value and continue to provide mm. you know information for you so oh, no, i think it's a good, good idea no i think i think mm. i think it is you know yeah you, it can seem to be harder for larger numbers but on the flip side larger numbers means if you've got the majority of people bought in they do the work so they're the ones that are living the values. You know, it's it's like a, you know, um, a football team. You know, when a, a you know a, a crowd at a football stadium starts chanting, everyone starts chanting. You know, yeah. there's that sort of ripple effect through. So what what can happen if you get it right in a in a big organisation? As long as there's communication, I think that's the point that. Yeah, and he sort of said that if you've got disparate people all over the place, then yes, it's going to be harder. And that therefore the message, the communication needs to be stronger, you know. So, and that's where you, if you're doing not just remote teams or hybrid teams, you, you've got to sort of look at how you, you, how you manage to achieve that. So, so the next sort of three chapters then was sort of really, yeah, for me was going into the what. So what is it that we actually do? Oh, that should be products and services not products seven services so, so gary what was what was your take from these three chapters products people and value so i'm just trying to remember i, I read it and then didn't make any notes unfortunately um i think in, like you know, the idea of the whole the 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 the, the fortune cookie principle is like you say you know fortune cookies are always the same uh, like yeah. we touched on earlier was you know people don't buy it for the cookies they buy it for you know the, the, the surprise at the end the magic of it sort of thing yeah you know, if you're going to differentiate between yourselves you know in, in your industries or whatever yeah all the products are the same but you know what can you change to to, to make it you know special for you for your customers it might not be any any, any major changes but like i think andy said you know you know if your customer feels it, it's different, it's, it's special because of what you said, then like you say, you're, you're on your way to, to making life a lot easier for yourselves. Yeah. And I think that, that's, that is the key. It's, you know, how does it make them feel? It's always, if you can come back to a feeling and emotion, then you've got a sustainable business, you've got longevity, you've got client retention. You know, if it is just a commodity, I come, I buy, I go, there's no feeling then you're going to have a transient customer um so that's you know yeah that's definitely a key one and one of their quotes was Seth Godin's quote you don't find customers for your products you find products for your customers mm. so it's that then adaptability to say well I've got that customer now my job is to keep them and you know keep engaging with them what else do you want what else do you want so any other points, Gary, there from the people side of things? Because we were sort of touching that a minute ago.
again, I think the, the, the positives of this book is the questions that are asked at the end. And like I said, well, how does that apply to your sort of business sort of thing? So it's, it's, it's good for, for, for us recently, like you say, we're trying to find some new people. You know, so do you hire for, for, for the values or do you hire yeah. for skills sort of thing? You know, one of the important questions we have is, you know, will they fit within the team? You know, um, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, qualifications aren't, aren't on the top of the list sort of thing, you know, but we know we can do the job, but they'll be a perfect fit for the team. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, again, it's that, that frame, framework uh, within the book to, to get, get yourself thinking, get yourself thinking about, about, about what you do. So it's, it's Yeah. How, how, how do you check people's values in the interview process? You know, we, we sort of meet them, we go, generally it's a, we tend to go on gut, you know, or do it if I like them, then they tend to fit my values. But we all know from experience that we don't always get it right <laughs> within a, a sort of first hour or so. So you're looking for sort of behaviours um, of what people have done in the past. So, I mean, that's, that's really key. Um, you know, how, how have you shown these values in your previous roles? You know, in your home life, you know, in, in what you do outside of work. Because that's you, you, you know, you can pretend in work that you're a certain type of person. Yeah, you, know, you can sort of ex- extrapolate, you know, what you've actually done. But does that back it up with what you do at home? <clears throat> you know, what your hobbies are, those sorts of things. That's a, a really good way to to get in depth on that. So, so, um, so Bruce, what's uh, any other points from you from these? Um, well, so just looking at the the value you deliver. Mm. Um, yeah I think uh, yeah a lot of these successful companies you know on the face of it you know it looks like you know they're just delivering coffee or some roses or whatever it is um, but actually you look into it yeah the, the true value it's not the coffee it's 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 the you know the other stuff that yeah. the customer perceives real value from what they're getting you know in terms of that service so um i suppose uh yeah the, the coffee example here they give um uh talk about snakes and lattes yeah um, that was a good and, name good uh, company name yeah it says why well, you can get great coffee and food at snakes and lattes the value the cafe delivers isn't a full stomach at the end of the evening it's the connection the customers make over games um so yeah it's i suppose yeah, for us, it's yeah, we, we've got a um, quite a, a dry technical service we offer, but what, yeah. what can we offer beyond that that would be, yeah, is true value to the client hmm. that actually said, yeah, that I want to use IT Dev uh, because this extra thing is something that I really appreciate and it something that makes working with IT Dev um, so much better for us. Um, yeah. So it's uh, perhaps, yeah, giving more thought to those things. Um, yeah. So I think naturally, yeah, as engineers, you, you can quite, you can focus much more on the technical and, and uh, yeah, the danger there is you can, yeah, you can work really, really hard to you know, have a, a technical product that is absolutely, you nailed it, it's 100%. But actually, if the customer doesn't see that, if, if, if from their point of view, whether it's 95% or 100%, if, if there's something else we can deliver, uh, but um, yeah, it really makes a quite a difference to the experience. Um, so yeah, I think the lesson is you know not to neglect those other things and yeah. in fact give those other things quite some focus because that could be quite a quite a differentiator. Yeah. So so I mean it was interesting on the coffee because they talked about Starbucks, didn't they? And Starbucks mm. is that you know third space. You know, it's not it's the space between home and work, and it's how you feel within Starbucks. And that has got me to end thinking, well, how come Costa Coffee then have almost sort of taken that? Because yeah, I think Costa Coffee sell more coffee than Starbucks do, certainly in the, in the UK. But I don't get from Costa Coffee that the vision, values and purpose are necessarily as strong as they are in Starbucks. Uh, it's a whipped bread company, you know, and uh, any thoughts on that? Um. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not really a, a coffee expert. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I have been, I think I've been to Starbucks once. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, 
yeah probably yes. does it does it come down to you know is your story you know how strong is your story how unique is your story if if your story is we want to give you a space that isn't home and isn't work hmm. well you know actually arguably Whitbread have been doing that for an awful lot longer than uh, Starbucks true yeah. yeah um so you know it's it, 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 it's it's not just about having a story it's about having a unique story um oh. and something that resonates uh, and, and I guess that kind of does resonate but at the same time it's not that unique oh. I suppose it was, you know, because when you do go to Starbucks, you know, they do ask your name, they write your name on the cup. And there are certain people, I think, that really buy into Starbucks. You know, I, I don't particularly like the coffee. So I've never really sort of thought Starbucks coffee is is wonderful. And um, and a, a bit of the thing there, they seem to have choice as well. You know, what what type of coffee beans do you want? I, said, I just want a coffee, you know. So I think, was it the McDonald's ad I thought was really good? you know do you want this that coffee this coffee that coffee and no i just want one for one pound 79 you know it's like <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's what i suppose that's why i was thinking with costa is you know do they have that sort of story behind them or have they gone down the sort of the more of a look we just make it easy for you to buy a coffee you know that's that's almost their story is you know it's just we've got the machines you know we're we're in franchise outlets you know we just make it really easy to get you a you know, a really good a really good coffee but um so i think you know i do think that you know we want to put pull out from these books the bits that we want to pull out from and, and you can't argue with them but i think also there there is you know again it goes back to what does the customer want you know do, do they really want to you know to have their coffee sit there with friends in a big jug and you know sort of like that there's another group of people who just want that convenience they just want that speedy i just want my coffee get in the van and drive away mm -hmm. you know and um and that's that would be the sort of you know that whether costa sort of push that because i don't think they do i don't think they're great with their sort of marketing their brand but what they are good at their strategic intent of actually delivering on it you know shout about it but they actually mm -hmm. deliver on it so just just my thoughts on it yeah cool so then we go into the next three which for me was really about the so from the what we sell to the how we sell it so, um, so and this was about the sort of the you know choosing a, a a name a brand name and a tagline i know <laughs> choosing a bloody company name is just the hardest thing ever i'm just setting up a company at the moment it's like what the hell do we call this it's so hard it really is just i've even found a, a website that uh, wix the web the website company uh does a sort of a company name generator so you type in a word and it gives you mm. lots of choices and they're all crap <laughs> they really are bad <laughs> I was like, how do you bloody come up with a name for your company? So uh, a brand name is more than a word. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but then you've got some, you know, cool names like Nike and Coca-Cola and, you know, uh, Apple and things like that. And you're sitting there just scratching your head, going, what the hell do I call? I mean, the easiest thing is to come up with some initials, you know, like NMT, you know, it's, it's just, I'll just go back to having some initials or something. So. So, uh, so Andy, what was what was your take on these three then? I was just going to say when they came up with Apple, people were probably like, "What? Yeah. <laughs> you, you sell computers? Why is your company called Apple? That doesn't make any sense." So uh, it just kind of, yeah, develops a life of its own, doesn't it? And, and but but was that I I can't remember from the why it was called Apple. What was the? No, I can't remember whether it was like the. Um, it was at the beginning of the dictionary, probably, like you said. <laughs> like, you know, it's all those, hard, all those companies, hard, A, A to B rock, movers or, rock, you know, A, A, A to B services. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <clears throat> I don't, I can't remember. I, I, I mean, I read Steve Steve's book uh, years ago, and I can't remember if it said in there whether it was, you know, Adam and Eve, the, you know, the Apple 
the sort of you know that uh, tempts people in you know you're tempted in by the the apple because oh, okay. it's got a bite out of it isn't it yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, um <laughs> I've just, apple, even more I've, tempting. I've, I've just i've just made that up because it could be the apple from cinderella that's poisonous you know it's, <laughs> to, uh, so uh yeah i think nike is obviously the, the god of um victory god of victory wasn't it yeah but that was that was called something else before wasn't it nike was oh yes yes it had a really mundane name didn't it yeah, what was the uh, oh blue blue ribbon sports? Yes, blue ribbon sports, and then it became Nike. It's like oh, how cool! You know, why, why can't yes. I just come up with a a cool name like that? To, yes, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of it's almost thinking, you know, what what can you see written on a t shirt that people actually would be prepared to pay money for? Yeah, yeah, you know, um, if. If you've got a t-shirt that says blue ribbon sports on it, it's it's yeah. probably something that only staff would wear and then only under duress. Yeah. Um, if it says Nike on it, then people pay for it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. 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 So what's what were your thoughts from here then? Um, yeah, I, it was interesting. So, sort of, you know, in the questions, it kind of came back to feelings again. What mm -hmm. you know, what should the brand, you know, how how do you want your customers to feel about your your brand and the tagline? Um, uh, content and copy, um, yeah, that was that was an interesting one. It was about sort of being more human and uh, mm -hmm. you know not just you know using jargon and making it super super polished, um, but actually just being a bit more conversational, um, not, you know, trying to avoid saying things that you wouldn't say to somebody yeah. face to face, really. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I thought I thought that was interesting. Um, yeah, asking whether your content could be interchangeable with with that of your competition, um, which, which is an interesting one. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of our content, you know, blogs and things, does tend to be on technical topics. Um, and, you know, although obviously we'd, we'd like to argue our, our content would be of a higher quality than our competition, but um, fundamentally we're talking about the same things. So, um, yeah. But again, is it speaking, that is it, it might be speaking your language, but is it, is it speaking your customer's language? I think that's the, mm. the key thing. Certainly the more technical you are, the more complex your business is, you know, it's like accountants. Your accountants, generally speaking, you know, technical words that. Oh, so talking to in you know, in layman's terms, yes. you know, bring it down to who your customer is, what questions are they asking, then solve their you know solve their problems. Yes, uh, it's and not about have... how wonderful we are. You know, it's, no one gives a damn how wonderful you are. It's it's how you can help them. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and we have technical and non-technical clients. Yeah. So, um, we have to produce technical and non-technical content. But, um, yeah, making sure the right person reads the right content and things like that is yeah. a bit more challenging. Um, and yeah, well, what about design? Um, what did I write down? What? Oh, yeah, what, what does it communicate? Is it sort of, you, you know... Um, is it professional? Is it fun? Um, you know, how do you align your design with your your message? I think it's it's an interesting one for us, and it's quite challenging. Um, you know, the the work that we do is very detail orientated. It's you know, you you have to be very thorough and professional with it. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, we want to convey. You know uh, the human side uh, of us as well, and, and and our passion for it. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, uh, maybe we need to talk to some graphic designers or uh, or something about how how one actually achieves that because they they feel slightly in in opposition. You you know, in terms of uh, a design theme. Yes. Yeah. It is. I mean, it does make a you know. 
again goes back to the Nike swish. You know, it's, mm. it's those little things, the memes. Yeah, you know, if you can create a meme out of <clears throat> you know what your logo is, get that across, and that there is a, an element of design flair that's needed to do that. Um, you know, at um, yeah, I, I remember designing my previous company's logo you know and it was like even that was a ball like it was <laughs> i don't know which one people are going to like yeah but it's like it's like i suppose it's like art isn't it you go into a, a gallery you know some things you like some things you... <laughs> excuse me some things you don't like yeah mm. uh, well. cool so that was really our sort of how we get the message across you know our name you know content copy needs to be in their language not ours and then you know the design the look and the feel you know should um you know again back that up you know the visual should back up the, the story the message and there, there are if you go to good designers they've got color palettes and certain colors mean certain mm -hmm. things you know blue is a calming you know um supportive color so you know you'd want that within you know your shipping business you know calm down we'll take care of this if you were red you know it's almost like a danger warning sign but, um, yeah. so um you know so you can use colors and logos on a subconscious level as well so i, I personally i think <clears throat> what we really sell is peace of mind yeah um so actually the fact that our logo is blue um is it, probably not a bad fit yeah yeah Otherwise, yeah yeah. yeah it's a good it's a good stable color you know yeah. ours ours is red and blue so god knows what that means <laughs> <laughs> just my i just like the colors i always like red and blue so uh, cool <clears throat> so the next sort of three are on actions so, um so <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> being called action coach action speak loud of the words so, you know, putting this into practice, you know, customer experience, you know, uh, the, the balance between price and quality. So, so Bruce, what's uh, what were your takeaways from these three? Um, I'm just having a look at the, the book. Um, Yeah, it's interesting. So just looking at the um, the one. So this is the your actions, and mm. uh, uh, yeah, there's a, a section at the back for the questions where it's talking about um, uh, the Apple Store. Yeah, how much training? Uh, yeah, the yeah customer support people get, and yeah, really they're, they're getting twice as much training in changing how the customer feels as opposed to um, what they do in terms of solving the technical problems, which is you know, quite interesting. Um, um, so yeah, so that's so it's all about well, it's the actions, it's the customer experience as well, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. The, uh, again, yeah, it comes back to IT Dev. Yeah, you know, we're yeah we're a very technical company. Yeah, we we yeah we we cannot be focused just on the technical. Yeah, we need to be thinking about you know the the customer experience, you know, the things that um, <clears throat> uh, you know make us attractive. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. You know, the different chapters as you go through them, they're they're all sort of touching on similar points, aren't they? Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, coming at it from different angles. Um, yeah, because this, yeah. this goes back to, again, the values. If the values yeah. are there, then your team yeah. will live the values and deliver what, what yeah. you set out to do. Um, yeah. But it's easy, to, you know, it's that whole thing of it's easy to <clears throat> say that you're this type of person, but if your actions mm. don't back that up, yeah, you know, I think and, that, and that comes back to it is all about the people then. You know, it's about the training. It's about the reinforcement of that. You know, yeah. that's, and that's that takes time. It doesn't take a lot of money. But it takes time and effort. So. Mm. Yeah, some of these things, like you know, say the Mailchimp examples. Yeah, they, there's an example of um, yeah the email that is sent out when uh, a subscriber has yeah cancelled their subscription, and um, yeah, the 
it doesn't take you know, that yeah you need to have some content in your email and you know uh, Mailchimp had one that was uh sort of very very appreciative of uh you know of, of their client and uh, I guess you know trying to leave you know in a very positive way um and yeah you know, just by you know being careful about you know the wording that you use and the messages you want to put out um yeah, you can really change the experience that your clients get. Uh, yeah. Imagine in that situation, somebody who's uh, cancelled you know, Mailchimp, having yeah you know, read the message they get, thinking, "Oh, uh, did I really want to cancel?" Yeah, and then I should, you know, should months change later, mind. Yeah. something yeah. comes up, it'd be Mailchimp. Yeah, I want to go to Mailchimp. Yeah. It's the company that I want to use, even though the actual, you know, technical service you get from them, it's. Yeah, it's a very technical thing, and there's probably other alternatives. Um, but yeah, just the that um, personal language and uh, appreciative, you know, engaging language, um, yeah, really makes the difference for Mailchimp. Or, or yeah. Um, but, um, and Gary, what about uh, the price and quality thing? Because that's obviously quite relevant more i said more relevant now with the inflation side of things we did the inflation buster workshop yesterday which I, i've just uploaded to our youtube channel to, uh, but uh, talking about you know putting prices up but you know positioning yourself you know in the uh i, I did like the uh we fix 12 dollar haircuts <laughs> everyone's putting the price down and you know it's the case of right okay I can I can see the gap in the market. What was the other one the uh, the glasses, wasn't it? Why why the glasses cost as much as an iPhone? Yeah, and uh, you know, bringing the price down, but creating a system that can deliver that profitably. So, what were your <clears throat> takeaways from that one? No, I don't think it's right. Like you say, it's you, know, you have to find the you know the right price for your customers at the quality that they're expecting. Yeah, no, there's no point, you know, like I say, pricing yourself as a premium brand and, and then, you know, not giving the service that's expected. You know, it's the customer experience and the customer service that we provide is you know, very important to us. It's the mainstay of what we do, yeah, sort of thing. But we also, we don't charge, you know, to, to top of the range sort of uh, rates because it's to, to get the service correct for that can be very difficult. We'd, we'd need twice as many people. Yeah, uh, sort of thing. So, like you say, but um, yeah, our, our our biggest challenge, like you say, is you know presenting ourselves as no, we can do this, this, and this, but you know the price mm. is this. You know, we're not the cheapest, but we're not the, the most expensive. Yeah, uh, sort of thing. But we do get things done. Most hey, what's <laughs> what? It's, it's what's interesting? Big, I yeah, uh, obviously uh, at the moment with inflation and fuel prices and. Everything going up, you know, it's it's, it's very difficult for us. Yeah, but, um, I'm sure it is for everybody else too. And I think the uh, it's an interesting thing with uh, the airlines at the moment. Obviously, you've got the quality airlines that charge prices, and you know, certainly BA. Well, well the BA quality is open to uh, argument. Um, but the fact that Ryanair, you know, when they were letting their staff go they managed to retain most of their staff. They reduced the hours. They put them on part-time because they could see that it would come back, whereas BA, everyone else just slashed. So now Ryanair are able to give a far better quality service than any of the other um, airlines. Yeah, you know, I think they've, they've cancelled about 25 flights so far this year, You know, whereas the others are in the thousands. Um, so, you know, again, it's that, you know, I think Ryan there, okay, you can, you know, people knock them, but they've always been very clear what their vision, values and purpose is. You know, we are a low cost. You know, we'll get you from A to B, no frills. You know, and that whole thing, what don't you understand about we don't do refunds? You know, it's the message is very, very clear. If you play within those games, you'll have a great time. You know, if you expect anything else, then you don't. So, when you do set your stall out for your price quality, then you've got to believe in it. You can't drift from that. So if you go to being the cheapest, you can't then suddenly become expensive. You know, if you go quality, you can't sort of then miss out on the service that you promise. 
but um so so i think that's you know that for me was a a good modern thing of this in actually in action so <clears throat> so that was that was sort of you know putting into actions actions speak louder than words are we backing up we can all, we can have the vision values and purpose but we've got to back it up with what we actually do yes that's so vitally important and that takes again time and effort to make sure everybody in our organization is you know is on the same page you know and, and more again go back to the hybrid work in more where we're potentially outsourcing work or people who are not at, uh, in the office you know are we actually maintaining the standards that we've set ourselves so and that sort of moves us into delivery you know so how do we deliver the the service itself you know so uh, perception distribution and the location so, so andy what's uh anything um, any yes so um, takeaways from this one yeah perception um yeah that was sort of how you know do, do you want to be an accessible um you know selling a sort of an accessible product have accessible brand or do you want to be more aspirational um and uh you know which comes back again to the to the pricing it's all about aligning mm. all these things isn't it yeah they gave the example of uh, vespa didn't they um uh, and then sort of the the social environmental and other sort of uh, associations um so um you know i, I think you, know, you mentioned body shop earlier i think you know, they um, sort of strong environmental um, policies and things like that. So yeah. um, <clears throat> that's you know that that's a perception um, which helps to you know drive drive their marketing in a way or, or you know um, attract customers. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, I I jotted down some sort of questions for myself when I went through it, but I I didn't come up with any answers. Um, I, I think it's yeah I found it a little bit tricky to decide what sort of associations and and uh, and things that would would be a good fit for our business. Um, you know, we are very much about, you know, being a, you know, a company that gives back. Um, but I don't think we have a, a single clear focus for that. Um, so that, you, you know, a, a direct association um, on, on that side of things is is tricky so i think, I think that yeah. maybe needs some thought um yeah distribution um so yeah thinking about how we can respond to customers wants and needs um and sort of partnership opportunities things like that um Yes, I wondered about you know, things like um, you know talking about sort of more flexible payments or something like that. Um, just trying to think through what might be of value to certain you know to different types of customers. Um, online ordering, maybe in some situations. Um, yeah. Uh, as for location, um, we only have one location at the moment. Uh, I know some of our customers do choose us for our location. And we have in the past said, well, actually, if we had, you know, some satellite offices, then that could open up other opportunities. So that's a, a potential sort of longer term consideration. Yeah. Um, in terms of what our location says about us, I think we, we we do quite well there, being on the science park. Um, 
you know, it's it's a nice office and a nice location surrounded by other technical businesses. Um, so, you know, I think that is well aligned with our positioning. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think I think that you know the location side, you know, I think also that goes onto the website as well, you know, because it's mm. where we're moving away from bricks and mortar, doesn't matter where, you know, where you're actually based, it's it's where people find you. you know, how mm. how are they gonna find you? So, you know, that location, are you are you yeah, be the brand people seek out, not the one that they stumble upon, you know. Mm. But I think there is that element is what are they looking for you know if they don't know you you know you've got to help them find you and that's that's going to be the key thing yeah so again i think that comes back to putting you know goes back to the they ask you answer the faqs the mm. this is the information i'm here i'm giving you all this information and then they'll find you that way you know if, if you're if your company's silent if it does nothing then well they are going to have to stumble upon you you know, mm. so um so i think that is a you know is, is a key one to to really think about there is uh is what they do but, um gary any any other sort of points of view obviously you're you're into distribution so this one should be perfect for you um, you see that seamless link there yeah no i was, saying, I was, I was the only one i didn't really think of when i read, <laughs> when I read the book um it's um it's it's, it's, it's quite quite good actually is just um listen to andy there about location and like you say for for us okay we're based in southampton we've got a, a box down office in, in southampton but like you say <clears throat> nmt itself is you know, part of our story is that we are a global shipping company yeah we have offices all, all around the world we have agents all, all around the world so it's until andy said it's actually you know yeah Part, yeah. part of our part, part of our perception is that you know we do have global 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 cover yeah um, sort of thing so it's you know so it's, it's a good point actually yeah yeah and then I'd say that in a way in, in this sort of virtual world that could still be virtual couldn't it you know <clears throat> you could have you know websites in you know German websites Spanish websites Japanese websites you know you can have a virtual you know, an office somewhere with a postal address but the answer phone is done you know centrally it doesn't have to be done in that country so you know so so i think yeah that goes back to you know what does our customer want if our customer wants us to be down the road from them then we should be down the road from them how do we do that you know to, uh, and i think that's where a lot of businesses you know fail they, they just they're not seeing it from you know the other side of the fence they're saying well we are this we do this we 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 you know and as, as i say when we do the sort of the the advertising workshop you know to, uh, if, you, if you put we too much in your promotional stuff then you know the only person that enjoys you know weeing over yourself is you for about five minutes and then you realize that that warm feeling disappears uh, so so it's all about you it's you yours this is this is really what we're trying to sort of get across here in that message so um, so yeah i think that's a that's a really you know sometimes you realize oh, actually we are we are doing the right things here you know we are you know maybe not by design you know we didn't sort of sit down read the book and then do it but we we actually listening to our customers and so we are a global business therefore we should have offices in every single key major port around the world you know even if it is just a you know a virtual office so from the from the client's perspective you know unless they knock at the door and go you know can i take you out for a coffee and you're not there <laughs> it doesn't really matter so. bruce any final bits on this one before we do the uh, last section i don't think so i think uh, it's been yeah, quite cool. well covered okay so you're going to start us on the uh, the last one then. Sort of, okay. uh, I, I couldn't find a name for this one. <laughs> so I just <laughs> said it was 17 to 20. Um, so, uh, you know, I think, it, again, it it goes into sort of not repeating itself, but reinforcing, you know, the bits that it sort of came up. So uh, any, any points for you on this one then? Just having a look. Um... <clears throat> Yeah. 
I just while you were doing that, the scarcity one's quite interesting because mm. there's a there's a new uh, pub restaurant just opened up outside Romsey. The it was a Duke's Head. It's now Duke on the Test, and uh, we've tried to book in there three times now, and it's been fully booked every time we've tried. And it's like, yeah, th- therefore there's more intense to to actually want to go. That no idea is any good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so uh, we we're actually eating there on Saturday. But that scarcity that I can't get in. But I, you know, that fact that I couldn't get in, I want I want it more than than ever. So uh, mm. so uh, I've just got to take this call. So you you, you carry on, Bruce. Okay. Just a, just a quick one for you guys. Is is reputation quite important for for, for for you and how you market? Yes, yes, massively. Um, it's you know the industry we're in is a relatively small industry, um, and you know a lot of people within that industry are, are quite well connected into to others. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, we we get a lot of referrals and uh, I say a lot of referrals. I mean, a lot of our business comes through referrals. Um, but it's, at the same time, it is a bit challenging because it's the kind of service that people only need sometimes. Um, and it's it's not necessarily a natural topic of conversation for people. <laughs> um so uh you know it, it's not like everyone in our industry needs our services um people you know will be developing a product from time to time people you know may be able to do that in house a lot of the time but occasionally you know want some you know to outsource part of that or what have you mm. so um it's it, it, the challenge with us is always about kind of keep reminding people keep in touch with people um we want them to to know that we still exist um and then when the need does come along then they think of us um but uh, but yeah i mean definitely reputation is is very important no, it's, it's massive for us as well. Yeah, say we're, we're in such a, you know, we're part of small shipping row row, and then within that, we're very much a niche market within that as well. So, mm. you know, having that repeat business is is key for us, uh, sort of thing. So, having a you know a reputation for for doing the right thing, being honest, um, and, and keep things going, you know, is, is very important for us. It only takes one one mistake and you know yeah. one major customer to then start mm. talking to the same people that. You know, we talk to, and we're in, we're in deep trouble. Yeah, yeah. So, so reputation is, 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 is massive. I, yeah. I think it's 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 so key for every business, isn't it? Now, it's certainly nowadays where social media, the message gets out so quickly. You know, you you know, you it's it's a little bit like the uh, uh, the Charles is it Charles Ratner? Remember Ratner, the Gerald Jewel, Ratner. Ger- Gerald Ratner, the um, the jewelers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, multi billion pound business, you know, stood up, said our stuff is crap overnight, business gone. You know, yeah. it's, that's how quickly it can just go, you know. Uh, and, that, and that was pretty much that was before social media, wasn't it? You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And you sort of see things now with you know, what Elon Musk is doing. You know, I don't know whether it's by intent or he's just completely off his trolley. But you know he he can affect the marketplaces and you know the reputation of, of things very very quickly. Yes. Um, you know, so you know, we've got to be aware of crypto up and down on a week. God, <laughs> like well, it's, it's the Twitter thing as well, isn't it? You know, he's it's like you know, is he? But that's you know, you've got people like you know Donald Trump did that as well. You know, you you know, it's almost whether I said that's why I don't know whether it's by 
design where they are thinking right well if i tweet this this is going to have this effect and that's what i want or whether they are just gung-ho and shoot from the hip and just say what's on their mind you know and and don't really sort of re- understand the consequences of that that the majority of people are sheep and they'll just follow and you know i think we should go and sort of you know to show them how we feel so oh well, that means you know riot in in congress you know it's like <laughs> um but uh but yeah that yeah the, <clears throat> it's so it's, it's so hard to build and so easy to lose your reputation and that, again culture values you know one one person doing a bad job in your you know bad team member doing a bad job can ruin your reputation mm-hmm. you know and it takes a, a lot a lot more time effort and money to to rectify that so that's why the rest of that yeah, you know, the early part of the book is so important to get it right so you minimize and if you do get it wrong you know the best thing i said i can't remember what it was in here but you know is to admit you got it wrong you know mm-hmm. say you got it wrong you know got it wrong i'm really sorry we'll sort it out you know, and have that budget to, you know, here's our budget for solving, you know, bad, bad situations. Because there's nothing worse than, you know, you get it wrong and then you get all the sort of, you know, well, it wasn't our fault, it was your fault, you did this. And, you know, it's, again, it's, it's this is a customer, you know, look after your customer. So, um, you know, it's really, 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 <clears throat> and it's, it's, you know, you go to restaurants, you know, if somebody you read a, you know, I think because some friends went and the, the lamb was bad and you know the 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 restauranteur was was very apologetic, replaced, you know, replaced all the food, didn't charge for the main course, you know, and gave a bottle of wine. You know, you know, you say, well, okay, that you can't we all make mistakes. It's how you deal with those mistakes can again set you apart. Yeah. Because that that's about your sort of, you know, um the values. So so any, any so free for all then any any other bits from the last sort of ubiquity i mean the, 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 i suppose the the ubiquity or scarcity uh, that probably goes back to the costa coffee thing that i mentioned earlier the costa is ubiquitous you know it's everywhere you know it's if you want you know you now say oh let's go for a costa you know um because it's you know you can get one you know mm. to, um, and if you can own that yeah, you know, if you can be ubiquitous to the brand, or your brand is ubiquitous to the product, you know, like the Hoover, mm. you know, then yeah, then you've got a very very good business from that. So, so any other any other standout points? Um, community is an interesting one. Obviously, that's something that we've worked on in the past trying to sort of you know run mm. uh <coughs> yeah. clients and things like that get people together um so um, yeah i think that's it's a it's a nice way of connecting with people um it does you know it, it leads into the next one really because it helps to foster your reputation um if you're leading a community on a particular topic then um you know, it, it tends to infer a, a certain amount of, um, you know, kudos in terms of your your knowledge of that topic. Um, uh, what else? Oh, yeah, the, she talked about um, sort of fostering advocacy and, and ownership and belonging. Um, of, of your customers to, towards your business so um you know how can you know how can you get your customers sort of so bought in and passionate about your business that they're going to advocate for you so yeah that's that's an interesting question um uh, particularly on a and, and i think in some cases we've you know we've achieved it well um and it's kind of through personal relationships um which which you know build over a period of time it's as as we grow the business um it's you know i I think you know it comes back to the values and i think as we've grown organically actually we you know like you say the, the fact that the the older members of the team are kind of sort of 
steeped in those values is is really beneficial to mm. um you know to, to propagating them um but at the same time it, it's as we grow we you know we might have some really good relationships um but we as business owners are not necessarily we don't have direct visibility of all of the relationships anymore yeah because they're personal relationships yeah yeah um so yeah it's it it, it, it kind of slightly challenging to to manage and measure if you like um that that sort of relationship side of things and it's, it's an interesting one because you you do find in, in, in some businesses that those relationships with customers become personal mm. and therefore what can happen is that person who's got the personal relationship goes, oh, you know what? I've got this really good relationship with this client, so I will go off and do this on my own. Mm. So it's that balance between a relationship between the company mm-hmm. and, and what the company stands for and the client as much as imbalance with the individual Mm -hmm. so there needs to be a a, you know an individual relationship but on top of that a company relationship yes yeah you know so so therefore the the company yeah i suppose that's in a way where corporate entertaining comes in and probably where it's sort of you know originated was Mm -hmm. you know you have a relationship with the individual but within a company setting Mm -hmm. you know so it's it's getting that and i suppose it's part you know part of why i do the uh, quarterly dinners you know is to get you to sort of, you know the relationship with me but also with other you know action clients and then we have the the big event once a year which you know will sort of be back you know in person next year and and therefore you you now with the bigger action coach community mm-hmm. so it's it's that sort of extension beyond an individual so, um, so you know i think that that is it's, it's again it's what it's one that yeah it takes time it takes effort to create um but if you can then you know you've got that membership you know mm. with your people and, and members are far more loyal than shoppers so so bruce any any final points um, from you yeah so it's sort of thinking about reputation thinking you know it's um yeah, things like uh, you know the client surveys, you know, asking for feedback, you know, from your clients. Yeah. So it's very, very yeah. important. I think actually sometimes um you know, listening to what the clients have to say about us and why they like us can get you almost reevaluating actually, are they saying some things that we've we've forgotten about or you know, we're we're doing something that we hadn't actually appreciated how much they appreciate that particular aspect and we can perhaps you know, focus on that a bit more um yeah we can adapt a bit um, um yeah so it's yeah getting that feedback is important yeah as andy said as we grow you know as owners we're we're getting more and more distant you know from those uh sort of relationships yeah we need to have uh sort of checks and measures and feedback to mm. understand you know, how our clients do see us right now and um you know if yeah real reputation is is key so yeah yeah we we, we want to yeah we want to have consistency yeah we want to be uh well known for you know particular things and yeah we're always working on that trying to yeah what is our position you know what do we want to be known about but uh, actually sometimes your clients can tell you because they can yeah they can say this is why we we find working with IT Dev works well for us over the experiences we've had in the past of other companies. So, listening to that, taking it on board, and then perhaps adjusting our message, um, yeah, it could be helpful. Yeah. Um, and again, go back to the you know, the uh, five star reviews. You know, getting your customers to give you Google reviews, Trustpilot reviews, you know, whatever it is. Because that's their way of, you know, endorsing, you know, the relationship with you. So, so I think that is, you know, and, and when people are checking you out, you know, where there are reviews, they've proven that it, it 
it gives people far more confidence of who they're buying from. So we're just we're just trialing a a, a review, you know, a, a new review platform at the moment um, that uh, might help because the, the problem with reviews is where do you you know you send it out? Did, but some people got Facebook reviews, Google reviews, Trustpilot reviews. They're all sort of over the place. Whereas this gives them the option to where they want to put their review. Um, okay, and uh, we'll actually manage. I think it will manage it. And they've got a connection with Google that it will actually show. This doesn't matter whether it's Google, Facebook, or whatever. This widget will actually go on your Google search. Okay. So you'll you'll get your. You won't actually necessarily be Google reviews. It could be anything reviews, but they will be actually on your um, your your search tab. So so I'm just we're just looking into that at the moment. Seeing <clears throat> it's been it's been endorsed by Action Coach, so I'm. I'm Hmm. I'm guessing it's going to be good, but uh, we'll just need to see whether it uh, works in practice. So. Good. So the uh, that was the, sort of the 20 keys that uh, she talked about. And then she finished with 21, the key that nobody can give you, um, which, you know, was you know, really this sort of, you know, for me was this one. You know, it's not how good you are. It's how well you tell your story. You know, it's that's the key thing. It's our ability to sort of talk about what we actually do do and getting that message out. If no one, no one knows it, then no one can actually deal with it. Um, so, you know, how how we tell the story in our actions, in the words, you know, that that's what we've got to get out there. So, um, you know, and the, the, the better we are at doing that, the more consistent we are at doing that. I think the better, you know, uh, really does help with you know, promoting who we are, what we do, and make sure that brand is there long after us as individuals have left it, you know, because we want to set this up for the future. You know, we're just custodians of our brand for the time that we're here. So and then we want to leave it in, in safe hands once we go. So, so any, any final words, Andy, from you know, your overall thought of the book, that last chapter? actions uh, you're going to take as a result yes um yeah it, it's interesting you know the, the communication sort of side of it, it it does sort of put me in mind of you know occasionally i have to remind engineers that uh you know it's it's not enough just to do the engineering but you know you, you do have to tell them <clears throat> about it as well yeah um and uh so yeah it's it's the same with with this isn't it we you know we, we've got a we've got to come up with a, a clear story which i you know I, I think you know last year we we made some good steps forward with that um but yeah then we need to communicate that message internally externally and just be really consistent with it yeah um yeah yeah cool Good. Gary? Yeah, no, I liked it. Like you say, it's, um, it makes you think. You say, what is the, you know, what is the story of your company? How do you, you market your story? You, you know, how do you market your company sort of thing? And um, yeah, for me, from a, you know, an accounting background sort of thing, this is all, it's all very new and it was, it was, it was good to get the, the, the cogs working through. Mm. So, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah, good. No, I liked it. Perfect. Uh, Bruce? Um, yeah, it's a good book. Um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I agree with a lot of things Andy was saying. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the work that we've been doing in recent years, yeah, I've got a, <clears throat> uh, action on me to, um, yeah, uh, sort of put that in sort of quite clear uh, format, documentation format, so that we can tap into that and then use that as a basis for communications and sharing with the team. Um, so, yeah, it's important thing to complete um yeah and uh yes yeah, we're, we're always looking at this stuff always revisiting it we always yeah it, these sort of topics yeah it can be quite challenging and they uh you work on it uh, uh, yeah just continuously really don't you yeah. but uh i think the key thing is being able to um capture it and then um 
yeah, make sure that everyone's on board because yeah, having uh, inconsistency, having confusion, yeah, having people not understanding yeah, what we're all about, that really isn't very helpful. And yeah, yeah you can spend all your time trying to answer those questions when you'd be better off uh, getting your message straight at the beginning. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's something that uh, I'm keen to progress. Yeah. yeah. Good. 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 So, as I say, yeah. You know, look, there's. I think there's nothing in here that I think goes against anything else. You know, it very much brings together good to great story brands. They ask, you answer. A bit of hemp. You know, the highly effective marketing plan. You know, but I think the more you think about it, and I, I do like the you know the questions here. You know, certainly in the early chapters, the later chapters, I thought would. Is getting a little bit repetitive but the first few chapters those questions are really good ones to ask yourself ask the team you know um, to say well okay so what do we really stand for you know what is that message and then obviously take action and then you know live live the values communicate it out there into the big wide world so so uh, good well I appreciate your your input into that guys very very good and i'd say it's a nice little book only a small one that one we're going to go into something a little bit meatier for the next one uh which is the 48 laws of power so it's it was recommended by a uh, a client who's uh, i think he's read it or reading it and they said have you read this and there's some really good topics in it uh the fact there's 48 laws and we've had we struggled with you know the seven uh, seven habits of highly effective people took us two sessions and we just about got through 20 today uh so the audio is about 25 hours long so it's uh, it's a bit of a meaty one so what i thought we'd do is we'll crack on with it see how it goes i'll see how it i i get through it and then probably touch base with you a week or so before and just say look do we do half in august and then half in september we might split this one over two months if it's uh, sometimes they're just like very very quick one pages but there's what this one does is again it's a bit like this book it talks about a particular law and then it gives some examples from history of where a person has shown this character and i think that's there, there is an abridged version of this which is a quarter of the size but when I read the reviews, it said this one was better because it actually gave you the case studies. So I think those are more engaging. I find them more engaging where you, oh, there's you know, Churchill. How did he sort of live that particular law? Um, so uh, so we'll see how it goes. You know, if we're flying through it, then we'll do it all in, in one go. Otherwise, we'll split it over a couple of sessions. So, okay. So, so uh, yeah, next one is 26th of August. Anybody away for that one? Uh, it's the sort of the uh, I think there's one more week. Well, I'm, I'm away the following week, which is the bank holiday. Bank holiday Monday is the sort of Monday after that. So, uh, um, which is a shame because I was I, I thought yeah I could probably read that all on holiday, but uh, I'll have to squeeze it in between now and then. And then the mastery workshops, you know, they're still there. So please, you know, if you do know anyone who wants to come, say if you're watching on the recording. Do remember those uh, those dates every other week um, on the uh, second and fourth Friday, Thursday, uh, second and fourth Wednesdays, and move to Wednesday, second and fourth Wednesdays of the month. So uh, love to have you along to those. And uh, but otherwise, uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. It's going to be a very nice weekend. Uh, enjoy the sun, and I'm just going to go off and get my uh, uh, tooth taken out. So uh, I'm not sure what my, the rest of my day is going to be like, but. Uh, at least your day can't be as bad as having a tooth extracted. So uh, <laughs> take care and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Thanks, Bye. Bye-bye.